What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. And so EV Next has been released in an alpha version of Blender so we can go try it out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so they've been talking about rewriting EV for a while now. Um, there's a post um, in the uh, Blender developer forum where they talked about this um, over two years ago. So this has been kind of like long in the making, but now we have a version of this that we can actually try out and see what it does. And so in order to find this, you can just go to blender.org and then under the download settings, um, this is going to be in one of the experimental functions, Blender 4.1 alpha. So if you click on the option for download Blender Experimental, you can see that the 4.1 alpha is in here and it's ready for you to start testing out EV Next. Um, like any of these that aren't stable releases, just be aware that this is an experimental build that can be unstable, obviously. So don't use this on files that you need for like your work or whatever you're doing. But um, if we download this, jump over into Blender, let's take a look at how we can enable this. Okay, so when you first pop this up, um, notice how it looks pretty much exactly the same as like normal Blender other than the uh, fonts have changed a little bit. Um, but where you're gonna find this is if you jump over into your render properties right here, the option to select your render engine, it used to be just EV Workbench and Cycles, now it's EV, EV Next workbench and cycles. I saw a video where somebody had to go into the uh, preferences and enable the experimental nodes and enable EV Next. Um, that is no longer a thing, best as I can tell. Um, so I don't think you need to do that, but if for whatever reason EV Next doesn't show up, you might want to enable developer extras under your interface and look under experimental and check a box for EV Next, but I don't think you have to do that anymore. Um, and so the way that this works is this is basically going to enable EV Next. And so let's jump over into a simple scene, right? I just created a simple scene that's like the interior of a building. Um, and we'll jump over into material preview mode like this. And all it is is just a room, right? And we'll go ahead and we'll enable this inside of EV. And so for me, EV Next is not really displaying things very well in material preview mode. There's probably a setting that I'm missing in here. Um, but when you're actually working in material preview mode, I would just set your render engine to EV or cycle so that you can see what's going on in your workspace. Or you can just jump over into rendered mode. And so if I do jump over into rendered mode, um, you can see that this is an EV rendering, right? It looks like an EV rendering. Um, it is kind of working in real time, but the shadows are really hard. They're kind of flashing in here. Um, you can see things like the reflection of light off of surfaces, but um, it's just, it's not a fantastic effect, right? If we wanted to at any point get more realistic lighting in here, um, we would want to jump over into cycles, right? So in rendered mode, if I jump over into cycles, this gives me a lot better result with like the rays coming off the light, coming off the surfaces, other things like that. Um, so that's how this has been done previously. However, if we jump over into EV next, what you're gonna notice is you actually get a substantially better result than EV in real time. And so when we do this, for example, um, say that I move this light around on the surface right here. Notice how the way that the light is bouncing off of the surface is significantly more realistic, but this is also casting more light on the interior and you can see how the rays are kind of affecting the color of the wall right here. And kind of an effective way of seeing the difference here. So if you jump back and forth between EV and EV next, you can kind of see this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to toggle my sun off just so you can see this a little bit better. But as we adjust things like the power of our point light that's in here. Notice how this is significantly more affecting like the color of our scene, um, the way that the reflections look, other things like that. And so if we jump back into regular EV, you can kind of see that, right? You can see um, that this is still casting this blue light and kind of reflecting off of the surface, but notice how this blue kind of stops right around the edge right here. It doesn't really get into the materials in the corners. However, if you jump into EV next like this, notice how that blue light is going to affect this floor material a lot more, as well as affecting this top material a lot more. And so just the quality of the light that you're getting off of this point light is just better in the way that it's uh, reflecting off of these surfaces, but really kind of in the way that it's working in the background here more than anything else. So you can really see that when we toggle back and forth. Okay, and so one of the most powerful things about EV Next is it allows you to now use displacement 
in real time. All right, and so remember that one of the things that's gonna be important is having a bunch of supporting geometry in here if you are going to use displacement. So I'm just gonna subdivide the surface to add some additional detail. Um, that way we've got just more geometry for this to actually like uh, actually displace in our scene. But notice how within EV Next, we actually have real displacement going on in here. And so notice how I can adjust things like my mid-level, my scale. This is more of a procedural material from uh, Smartify nodes, but you can see how it's actually giving you that real displacement in 3D um, in real time, which is extremely valuable, um, right? That's something that uh, I've wanted in EV for a long time. I mean, previously, you know, if you jump into the old version of EV, right? Right here, notice how you were just stuck with it flat, right? You could definitely render it out in cycles like this, um, but that, that was obviously much more time consuming. So now having the ability to actually do that and have that displacement inside of EV next, I think is a game changer. And I think it's gonna be something that really takes EV to the next level. So personally, I'm really excited about this, especially the displacement. It's just going to be a game changer for the way that we can render in real time. If you are looking for some more cool features that are coming up in Blender 4.0 when it gets released, I'll link to those videos on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.